Hey everyone, it's Tara with Rent Mason and Leaf Cutter Bees. I want to come on today and teach you a little bit more about your leaf cutter bees. We provide a pollinator kit that comes with Mason and Leaf Cutter Bees, but if you're coming into this season in the summertime, we can also provide you with a Leaf Cutter starter kit. That comes with the black house with a simple little hook to hang it up on a flat surface, not on a tree. And then your Leaf Cutter block has the black face on it. So if you got our pollinator kit, you'll know that the black face is the leaf cutters, the uh, lighter block was the mason bee block. But you're simply gonna set this up and just set them in here just like this. You're gonna wanna have them closer to the edge so that the sunlight hits it and it's painted black to warm it up. But these little leaf cutter bees are remarkable pollinators. Um, I'm getting a lot of calls right now saying, my leaf cutter bees, they haven't emerged, I don't know what's wrong. Well, the difference between the mason, there's a couple differences between the mason and the leaf cutter bees. So the mason bees hibernate in their cocoons all winter long and they grow into that full-grown bee during the hibernation process. So when spring hits and they hit that 55, 50 degrees, they emerge right away. Leaf cutter bees hibernate in the larva stage. So inside our nesting blocks are three rows full of little teeny tiny leaf cutter bees. So you know, I'll show you this right here. This is what it looks like inside your, your block. Teeny tiny little rows. Like I pulled this apart so they're not all full in my in my demo. Um, so this is what they look like inside. And what she does, mason bees, masonry work, they use mud to construct their nesting chambers or mud, pollen, baby mud. Leaf cutter bees use teeny tiny pieces of leaves. Leaf cutter bees are about the size of a watermelon seed. Remarkable pollinators with those, the scopa belly floppers, just like your mason bees. They flop onto those flowers to collect that loose pollen. So they're incredible pollinators for your veggie gardens, your summer fruits, like your blueberries and your greenhouses. These bees are really great for greenhouses, but she's gonna take a teeny tiny piece of leaf that doesn't kill your plant. It's so small. And what she'll do is she'll carry that back into the house. She'll crawl all the way in the back. She'll chew it and make it really pliable she'll line the back of the hole she'll get a couple more and then she'll sprinkle that loose pollen off and she'll form it into a little pollen loaf for her baby she'll lay a tiny egg and then she'll go back and she'll get a couple more leaves to then snugly tighten it up into a little leaf sleeping bag so when you see a row of leaf cutter let's see if I can get a longer one I've already broken one of these off so this so each one of these little tiny cells is your leaf cutter bee so if I go like this there you go. There is your little leaf sleeping bag. So that is what your little mate, what your little leaf cutter bees are inside. One of these is a tiny little larva. When it does feel the temperatures and it grows um, and metamorphosizes into that full grown bee, it does take them about six to eight weeks and then they will start to emerge. The boys will come out first and then the girls will come out just like your mason bees, they'll come out later. So when the boys emerge, they'll wait for the girls. The girls will fly off and they won't start nesting until they give those boys lots of piggyback rides. And so until they're fertilized, that's when they'll come back and start nesting. So when they're out in your garden and they're looking for the boys, they might also find other nesting sites in your yard. So I wanted to show you a little video that I did a couple years ago of how teeny, teeny tiny these little bees are. Um, like I said, they're about the size of a watermelon seed and they are just the sweetest little bees. They don't sting, really teeny tiny, and they are remarkable pollinators. Um, and and stay stay on because I'm also going to play at the end of this video. Um, I, I did a macro with my macro lens to get them up close and their eyes are unbelievable. Super, they're just amazing little bees. So I wanted to come on today. Thank you, Wind. I wanted to come on today and teach you a little bit more about your leaf cutter bees. We still have um, about 400 blocks left. So if you haven't gotten your leaf cutter bees yet and you would like to have some summer pollination and release more solitary bees into your yard, there's time. I will link all the links down below. Um, you can just go to rentmasonbees.com, select store, and then I have all of our stuff, all of everything we have um, 
to provide in there. Uh, so feel free to give us a call or pop me an email at info at rentmasonbees.com. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I teach as much as I can through video because I'm a visual learner. Hopefully you guys are too. And uh, subscribe to our newsletter because I'm hand-holding and we are your solitary bee guides. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here for you. So I hope everyone is loving their bees. If you have mason bees, they're about, they should be about done. It's the end of May, so they should be almost done. So then you can swap your blocks. You just take your mason bee block out very gently. I'll link how to do it down below and then put your, mace, uh, put your leaf cutter block in. All right, I hope everyone's enjoying their gardens and their bees. Happy pollinating. Bye. Thank you.